Our next question is back to you, Jam. We've just got a couple left. <laughs> now, this is a good question that I was not going to be surprised they come up. It's from one of the long-term fans, and it actually ties into Barry here a little bit as well. Oh. <laughs> Kylie and Jason, when they first auditioned, what were your first thoughts and memories of them? Of Kylie and Jason. Well, Kylie, uh, I can remember her coming in as a very shy little thing, and I put her in front of the camera and uh, started to do a scene. I, I remember looking from her to the screen and going, oh, this, I've got something here. This is, this is something special. And it's, it's, it's something that happens between the camera and the screen. And it's, it's something that people have asked me. It's been the million dollar question, I think, that every journalist in Australia and UK have asked me. And Barry. And Barry. <laughs> and, and, you know, one's tried to find so many answers, but it is, it, you know, people have called it animal magnetism and all sorts of things, but, you know, a love affair that an actor has between the camera and all of that sort of thing, which really, but it, it, it comes from an internal thing, I believe, with, with an actor. And I remember Jason coming in um, as a schoolboy. And, um, you know, typical schoolboy, he'd just come from school, was sweaty, and the school was. <laughs> and his style, the, the tie was all skewed and everything. And he, he sat down and um, he did his audition. And he was, once again, I looked at the screen and thought, yes. And I actually offered him the job, but he turned it down because he was doing his uh, VCA, I think, because he'd spoken to Terry, and Terry said, no, 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 you've got to finish school. And I said to him, okay, don't worry about that. You know, something will come up a bit later, which of course it did. So as soon as that role came up, and I just offered it to, to Jason. So, uh, but it is that special quality, but it is a million dollar question. And if I'd been able to answer it, Barry, I, I would have been worth a lot of money these days. <laughs> but it is a special quality that an actor has. And, and it is like a bit of a love affair that they have between the camera. And, and not, not everybody really has it. I mean, everybody along here has it, obviously. <laughs> and if I didn't say that, they'd not be able to do it. But, uh, so I've got to say it. But, in here, that's what it is. Yeah. Thank you, Jan. And fans, I don't know about you, but I don't think I've ever seen Barry's eyes so open and interested in my life. <laughs> We're going to have this... love affair with me? <laughs> oh, it's oh, oh. Dead silence. Do you want to say that one again? I see. So who's going to have a love affair with me? Jared. <laughs> well, oh, there's dead silence. Amanda. Nobody wants to be an actor. Are we going upstairs now, or? <laughs> <laughs> I can't reach out there in five. Beautiful. We are going to start winding it down, ladies and gentlemen. Just a few last things to go over. Did anybody else on the panel have anything else they wanted to say before we start to wind down? Well, I think we've cop shot. I had an interesting role that, that wasn't about a housewife or washing dishes. I was actually played the lover of my brother. Oh! And we Scandal. made... No, my real brother. We were cast as... Um, we were cast as boyfriend and girlfriend. My mother had had a fancy. And we were written up in truth. <laughs> She had to kiss him. Scandal! Oh, yeah. Nothing's wrong with that. Margot Amanda, did you have anything else to add? Uh, this is the first time that I've been to this particular event run by these brilliant organisers, and I wanted to say that it's the most best run event that I've ever attended. And, uh, and I lo I've loved meeting you all, and thank you for having me, and it's been a wonderful day. Thank Pick up on that point of that, um, that that Liddy made in regard to cop shop because when I did a cop shop, it was a two-hour special of cop shop, and I um, I got a Penguin Award for it. A Penguin Award, I think, was a precursor for for another award that's come about. The Penguin Award's not no longer with us, but I played a, a rape victim, and the rape victim stood her ground, um, and it was a very it was a two-hour. Um, to our special, and it was directed by the fabulous Bud Tingle. Uh, may he rest in peace. So perhaps uh, Lydia and I are probably um, similar in ages. 
So perhaps we were going through this wave where women started to play more meaty roles. And I was a photographer, actually, and I was, uh, was based on a real story, and I was accosted as I was leaving where I'd been photo photographing that night. Um, so I just wanted to say that also in defence of uh, Australian TV in the early 80s. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Amanda. Um, I'd just like to, to think for a minute about all the beautiful people that have died in prisoner. We've lost so many of them. It's very bad, Betty Bobbitt, you know, yeah. and in England, Betty Bobbitt, and of course our wonderful Sheila Florence, who is okay. thanks to Monica Maud. And some um, Heather's just given me the most fabulous photo of me and Monica Maud, and it's it's just so wonderful to see those people that we we went through so much with. But I want to do a shout out to Glenn who looks after Sheila Florence's grave. Yeah. And it is <laughs> Jared. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add something that you were saying about... If you wanted to say something about the comment about ageism and uh, why older actors aren't working as much in Australia. If you look at what's happening in the States, you've got um, older actors, um, Harrison Ford um, on a major, wonderful series with Helen Mirren. Most of them are in their 70s. Um, and the UK as well. And, and the UK. UK. But yeah, why this sort of youth? Uh, good on them. I mean, you know, young people, yeah, get them work. Good, good for them. But um, the, the putting us on the shelf is a bit, you know, can be a little irksome. The only good thing about being my age is that you become invisible to younger people and it's a great time to take up shoplifting. <laughs> ageism I think the problem we're having is that there are so many reality shows as well it's not just ageism it's this love and passion that everybody's got for watching people who are prepared to open up so vilely and, and on television about their private lives and, and you know they're not they're not acting but what is so grueling to me is that they are then put in yes. major television yeah. series yeah. and they haven't got a clue and some of them are given like a two month crash course in acting and it just seems so cruel when I'm not just talking about the people here but the young people that do go through NIDA they're not getting a lot of work either because of the reality show because the reality shows are so watched and the networks put so much money into them. Yes, mm. yes. And there's not enough net. No. And also, um, they get you get cast nowadays with how many people love you or like you on Facebook and Instagram. So follow us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where and, and of course all of those people that are in married at first sight and, and uh, uh, bachelors and bachelorettes. They're only on there to get likes, and they, they do the most outrageous things to get more likes. Yes, Heather? Um, I'm noticing, too, there's nothing in Australia cinema ago, like last time movies are only out of Hollywood. Yes. For those of the, you that can't hear, Heather's saying that they're not allowing Australian films to come out and, and have a good run anymore, where they used to, because everything's going to the, the, the Netflix and... Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Very as well. Yes, yeah. it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. So yeah. It, it's it's ageism. It's the reality yeah. shows, but it, there's a lot of young people that can't get work either because of the reality shows. So. And just, just one of the things that um, I learned many years ago <clears throat> about casting was from a wonderful lady called Betty Pounder. Uh, and uh, I was, she was one of my mentors in my career. And she taught me that, you, you know, you always get the older characters and the younger characters because the younger ones learn from the, old from the older ones. That's how I started my career, was learning from older performers. And that was the secret of, that to me is the secret of making a good cast. 
the older actors, the young ones, are you getting the young ones actually sort of learning under the experience, and mentoring, passing, passing information on, and how things should be done. And it, it, you know, sadly, as, as um, Amanda said, you know, and I've done it myself in a way with, with neighbours, was they want the young, the young ones that they just want to put in. But I always made sure that at least they had some sort of background. But these days, unfortunately, they just stick them in because they're pretty and they can sort of, uh, not that they always don't fall over the furniture and I just speak properly, but never mind, we won't talk about that. Okay. Oh, uh, Kathy? Um, I just wanted to say, I think part of that has been um, the dismantling of the Make It Australia campaign from when I was a child. So we're talking 50 years ago. Yeah. And it wasn't me, it was actually the older generation, I was just a kid there holding up a poster. The performers worked so hard to actually get Australian stories made with an Australian narrative. We had studios in Abbotsford, many, many studios. They employed all of us, we all rotated in the shows. We developed our craft. The narratives were Australian driven, not American driven. And what is passed off as Australian content these days is a technicality using a certain number of Australian cast and a certain number of Australian crew up north. But these are not Australian shows. So I inspire you all to encourage an Australian narrative because we need it. Yeah. Um, on that point that you made, Jan, um, I was lucky enough to write for Neighbours for two years, and I remember when my storylines would arrive in the mail and I'd, <coughs> I'd have a week to write an episode, which is the way it worked. Um, there'd be four writers in a month and you'd write your episode. Um, and I would eagerly read the storyline and I'd go, oh, goody, according to my criteria, which was, if the storylines for my episode were going to involve a lot of the older actors, the character actors, oh, I was a yippee I knew I could really get into it. That that, and my feeling was about that was that I can give them anything, they can do anything. And sometimes when it was heavily sort of playing with the younger actors, I'd have to play it more carefully, more safe, because there was a kind of way that, in a way, that they all sounded a bit the same, and that I couldn't stretch them in the same way. But when I had the older actors, you make you dense, all the, the fabulous older actors in that show, I'd be like, well, I'm gonna have some fun this week. And literally, you'd know, it didn't matter what you gave them, they would be, and they would be challenged and enjoy it. So. But, you know, like the young ones have to learn. So the young ones are learning from those older actors, like you said. If, if they're smart young people, they're watching, they're taking it in, they're going, how do I differentiate myself? How do I actually get specific about this? And, and, yeah, and how, how do I turn this from being just kind of saying the words to something more? Yeah. Thank you very much, Margo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is coming almost to the end. I do need to call Barry up because he has something he would like to tell you. <laughs> Barry. You really do not want to hear me sing. <laughs> and before I give the result of the, um, the raffle, I just want to say a big hello to my gorgeous friend down the end there, Catherine Grimmore. So hello, those, Catherine. For those of you who don't know her, she appeared in nearly 100 episodes of Wentworth. She was one of the unsung heroes behind the back. And I just want to say, I haven't seen you in four years, and I love you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about the Barry's Right, I just want to thank you all for coming, I really do. And today, for, the, um, for Wildlife Victoria, you guys have raised $1,050. 
It's been an incredibly emotional day for me, but that's a whole different story. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. To be so generous, thank you very much. What a phenomenal amount. Thank you so much, everyone. And as I said before, we will post on our page the receipts to show that we have donated that money. It has come to the end. From my perspective, I just want to say firstly, thank you to the amazing panel that we have had here today. You've been an absolute pleasure, and I can guarantee from the other three, so the amazing Christine who joined us in this from the event this year. She's a Melbourne girl. We've got the amazing Maria. We've got one for Maria. Maria does so much of the running around. It's ridiculous. It is amazing how much running around she does behind the scenes. Christine, as I said, is new, but she has been such a big part of this as well. She is so great. She is the best hands-down proofreader we have ever met. She, it's been a bit of a running a joke with us for the last few months that she's had to proofread everything because a lot of the work we do gets done very late at night because we have lives as well. And Christine is such a trooper checking everything half a dozen times and sometimes we make bad mistakes. <laughs> And to the British brother that I've got, Mr. Barry Parker, who funds himself to fly me at every bloody year at the DJ in the UK. Thank you, mate. A lot of you may not know, especially the new ones, but all of the artwork that you see on there, the merchandise, all of the graphics we have online to promote this, even the signs you see around here today, that is all one man, Barry. We worked well as a trio, we worked well, even better as a couple. I also want to point out a few extra pit things as well. The man up there with the big stick. <laughs> I said stick. <laughs> Stephen West, he has been an amazing help today as well. He's provided us with a handful of artwork that has been amazing that not a lot of people will ever see. Thank you, Stephen, so much. I also want to thank Bill, who I think is in D now, he's gone. 